Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday and in this video we are going to learn how to test code that makes a call to fetch. So we're going to learn how to test fetch but also how to mock out fetch so that it doesn't make real HTTP requests all the way across the internet, which is uh, A, slow, B, you get sort of responses back that you may not be expecting. For example, uh, this is a function which converts some currency, say USD to CAD, but um, the currency rate's always changing, so it's very hard to test and get consistent um, responses. So this is part two of a very short series where we're talking about testing fetch, uh, working with mocks in Jest. Um, in that part one, we did everything sort of manually by, in, by scratch in, um, in Jest, but in this video, what we're going to be doing is working with a library called Jest Fetch Mock that does a lot of the heavy lifting for us and uh, is a lot easier to work with. So you may think, well, why don't you just start with this? But I think it's good to sort of understand um, sort of underneath the covers how things are working before you uh, use a library that does all of the hard work for you. So first thing I'm going to do is install Jest Fetch Mock. And after you install this library, what you need to do is go into this, uh, we're in Create React app. It's got a file called Setup Tests that's run sort of anytime you're, you're running your yarn test command. And here's where you can do global stuff that's used across all of your tests. So what we, what we need to do here is import fetch mock from, I always forget the name of this package. I just installed it, just fetch mock. Just fetch mock, and we need to tell it to enable mocks. So for all of our Jest tests, don't use the real fetch, um, mock it out so that we can have sort of fast, consistent, um, pretend HTTP calls. So with the setup done, our package installed, let's get these uh, tests running, and we'll go in and write them. So just to review quickly what this function does, it makes a call to fetch, it converts the response into JSON, and then it accesses the rates and then specifically the destination currency, so CAD in our case. But if it sees a rejected promise or an exception here, it will catch it and return null. So we're gonna test A, the happy path, and B, the failure path. Cool. So I've already set up a file, uh, currency.test.js. I've already imported our convert function, and we're gonna write our two tests. So it converts correctly, like this. We'll pass an async function in here, and we will make a call and get its response. So const rates is equal to convert from USD to CAD. I forgot the a wait because it returns a promise. And then let's test that it is equal to 1.42. So if this runs, I believe it should fail still. And that is because we haven't told fetch what value to, um, to respond with in our fake response. So we received null, meaning it didn't really work. So Prior to calling the convert function, what we can do is we can go into fetch and we can say mock response once. So what response, what fake response should fetch receive? And we eventually want an object that looks like 1.42, like this, but I don't think that works. Let's see, maybe it does. No, and that's because um, in this code, it gets the result and then it calls result.json. So what's it doing in here? It's basically taking a string and it's json.parsing it. So what you need to do is actually pass in a JSON string. So we need to JSON stringify this object here. So we've told fetch sort of what to do, um, what mocked response, we've called our code and then we've tested it, that it works and all tests pass. We can add a little bit more here where we can say expect fetch to have been called times once. So if it's important for you to, to test how many times 
fetch was called, you can do this here. And then you can also say expect fetch to have been called with. You can even pass in sort of what um, parameters were passed to it when it was called. So if we look at our actual implementation here, it's this uh, URL that we'll just come back here and paste. So if we sort of make it fail first, which is always a good thing, um, Euro, it should be receiving USD here. So I believe it will fail and it will say, we expected to uh, receive Euro, but we actually received USD, which is correct. So we just update that and it should work now. Cool, so we've tested the happy path. Let's test the sad path, the failure path. So it um, catches errors and returns null. So this is an async function, just like the above. In this case, we are going to say um, fetch mock reject. So just mock a rejection. So promise dot uh, reject API failure, like that. I actually don't even think you need, I think you can just pass in this. We'll see. Okay, so we set our up sort of pre-executing our code. We'll call our code now. So const rates is a wait for the convert function to go from USD to CAD. And because our fetch is going to reject the promise, what we can do is we expect rates to equal null. And if we want, we can also put this down here too because those should be the same, but probably that's not needed. And no, ah, actually, this is good that it happened actually. So I believe this code's fine, but here we tested that it should have only been called once, but you can see here it said we received two calls. So why was that the case? And that's because this mocked fetch function is sort of carried and used in both of our tests. What we wanna do is sort of make it pristine again um, prior to each test. So what we'll do is we'll say before each, run this code and we'll take our fetch and we will call reset mocks. So what this will do is basically set everything back to the initial state between each of these tests. And now our tests all pass again. So we covered how to handle the happy path with mock response once, the, the sad path, the failure with mock reject. We looked at how to test how many times our mocked uh, fetch function was called. What did it receive when it was called? And we also learned how to reset it between each of our tests. Um, there's one more thing you can do. What happens if your function was calling fetch twice and that was actually expected? So instead what you can do is you can say fetch um, mock responses, responses, and you can actually pass in an array of responses. So each one has a body like that. Actually, let's go look at the docs. So just fetch mock, um, mock responses. So each one, okay, so we still need to stringify here. And then it's a second one. Okay, it's a little strange, but so I was doing it wrong. So each one is an array where the first one is your stringified response. First value of your array. The second value is you can override like the status if you want to have like a, a 404 or something like that. So if it works, took a while, I don't know why, but we'll hit A to run them all again. Cool, a lot faster this time. We basically, this one is just for once, but if your code is making multiple fetch recalls, you can mock multiple responses, sort of passing um, one or more arrays. We were only calling it once, but imagine you had many of these, where you pass another array of these these two pairs, and you can handle on your first call, mock it this way, on your second call, mock it that way. 
You can also like conditionally mock, like mock it if the URL looks like this or if you were past these parameters, etc. But I will leave that up to the viewer to go and check out the documentation to see how that works. So hope you enjoyed this video, how to mock fetch calls and test them uh, using this library called just fetch mock. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye.